Today's lesson is a continuation of drawing a house in one point perspective. Um, I'm just going to add another step, add, add in one or two new things as we go. So step number one, I'm going to go ahead and put the X in the upper left hand corner again, just to keep it as far away from what we are drawing as we can. Okay, so instead of doing a little pointy roof house, I'm just gonna show you freehand what we're about to draw and then I will go ahead and do it slowly step by step. So we're just gonna do a barn. So we're just gonna talk through you know, the difference. So we're always gonna start with this basic cube shape. And then we're gonna go ahead and now, instead of a pointy roof, we need something that kind of looks like that. Um, so to, we're, we're starting off with something like this. And remember that these are just the skills to help you draw whatever you want. Because when you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, it's a barn, or is it one of those old fashioned metal lunch boxes? Uh, or is it a treasure chest in the bottom of an aquarium? So just remember, take the skills that you can then apply to draw whatever you want. Okay, so we know how to do this. Step number one, draw the front of the object. So I will start with the front wall of the barn. I think the hardest part of drawing a one point perspective, once you understand how to do it, is getting your vertical lines to be straight up and down. So just a reminder, if you've got fancy tools like me, I'm using a set square so that I can align the bottom to end up with uh, a perfect edge. But you can use any straight edge to do that. So I can do the exact same thing as long as it's a new piece of paper that's never been cut or anything with a straight edge, is remember by aligning the bottom to your piece of paper, that will ensure that anything you draw is a perfect vertical. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to mine. Same thing, I'm using the side of it to end up with a perfect horizontal line. So when you're just doing these practice ones, if they're a little bit off, that's okay. But some of you are perfectionists. Okay, so step number one, draw the front. Step number two, go back to the X. So a reminder, you go from the corner to the X. Now, we realized after your first drawing, you don't really need to draw the line back to the X, just the ruler has to go to the X. So I'm gonna stop right about there. Here. And remember, a lot of these lines are just blocking lines, so you wanna keep yours fairly light. All right, step number one, draw the front. Step number two, go back to the X. Step number three, cut off the back. Whatever you do at the front, you do at the back. So if the front goes straight up and down, the back goes straight up and down. We're gonna make it this, about this long. All right, and reminder that the front go, the top goes straight across. So it has to go straight across at the back as well. And then I'm ready to put add the roof. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put the scrap paper back down again. We need to think about this. So yes, uh, the, on the first drawing, um, we realized that in order to get a triangle, we needed to find the middle so that we could do this. And you probably already figured out, hey, I can now draw tents <laughs> and anything else you want based on a triangle. So what information do I need to do something like this? Well, finding the middle is nice. Okay. Well, what if I find the middle? Oh, that's going to work. What if I find the middle again right here? And I find the middle again right That's the information I need. So then I can go like this 
And then I, now I have this information, now I have this information. Okay, well, and if I find the middle going this way, oh, there we go. So this idea about finding the middle to figure out things, that is the kind of the most useful thing that we will be doing. Um, it's gonna save us a lot of math, a lot of math. Okay, so first of all, I need to uh, figure out where I want the top of this roof to be. So let's extend. And I'm gonna make mine, meh, I'm just guessing, this high. Okay, and I like to erase things I don't need kind of as we go for a minute. Okay, so this technique of dividing up space, obviously we could just use a ruler and divide this in half and divide it in half and divide it in half, um, which is gonna work for the front of objects. It's not gonna work when we get to the side of objects. We'll look at that in a couple minutes. So one of the skills to develop is this skill. So again, corner to corner, and you may have already realized, again, you don't actually need to draw a line from the corner to the corner as long as the ruler goes there, because you can just do stuff like this, where you just put the line in the middle. For now, until you're comfortable with that, and you know exactly how much of the line you need to see, you might as well just do this. Okay, so you go from corner to corner, that gives us the middle. And then the next step is to go straight up. That will divide the space in half. All right, so we now have this half, this half, we need to now just divide this part in half. All right, so before I do that, I'm going to show you this trick. So go across the middle. And you can see we've now divided it into four. So then to divide in half again, I don't need to go from here to here and here to here. Ah, I already have a rectangle right here where we've already gone to one corner. So if I just go like this, cool. That gives me the information I need to go straight down here. And I've actually divided that. And the same thing for this side. I already have a rectangle with a line going from one corner to the other. Go like this up through the middle. And I've just done a lot of math and I've done a lot of perfect math without the ruler, without the calculator. And anytime I can get easy math, I'm going for it. Um, and understand that uh, we're just going to keep repeating the same steps over and over again, one, two, three, right? To get here and then the find the middle thing is we're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And we'll just continue to do there. So now that I have these lines, I can go in and go, okay, what do I wanna keep? So I wanna go straight across here. And I said, when I get a little confused or if I'm not sure of something, I'll just kind of put down the ruler and freehand. So I'm gonna go here. And then if I go from this corner to this corner, yeah, like that. Yeah, that's gonna work, okay. So now I'm gonna go in and erase. I don't need any of this. And I don't need this. All right, so now I have just created a more complex shape. So this is now the front of the barn. Um, and then, so when it comes to all these blocking lines, Again, just learn to draw them really light. Obviously, I need to draw a little bit darker just to make sure that uh, they show up in the video. Um, and often I'll just use them later to draw stuff, as we'll see. Okay, so step number one, draw the front of the object. Just do the front of the roof. Okay, step number two, go from each corner that you are able to back to the X. 
So step number one, here we go. Step number two, go back to the X. I can go from this corner back to the X. And I can still squeak in the top of the roof. If you, as you start to get up near this X, you won't be able to see the top of the roof anymore. All right, but you don't have to guess on that. Before you used to just kind of guess, I don't know, how much roof can you see? Now you don't need to, which is the greatest part about the perspective, is the X always gives you the information you need to know. Okay. Draw the front of the object, go back to the X, cut off the sides. Whatever you do at the front, you do at the back. So if the front goes straight up and down, the back's gonna go straight up and down. If the front goes at this angle, the back goes at this angle. If the front goes straight across, the back goes straight across. So again, I'm freehanding it going, yeah, that looks good. And now I'm gonna take the time to do it correctly. So straight up and down. So this angle here is uh, the, one of the harder things to do. So a reminder, I always use two edges, whatever you got, even if it's just another pencil, and I put it on like this in order to get parallel lines. I've got a chunk of wood sitting here. So I'm gonna use it. I said any straight edge will do, even if you're just using pieces of paper to try to get those angles the same. Got it. And then the straight, uh, this is the one that if I'm gonna mess up, it's gonna be this one. So again, you can use any straight edge and go along the edge of the paper is your easiest one. I find this angle gets tilted really easily. Um, and if not, do this, the two uh, edges thing. So again, if you go like this and you go like this and look at this space to see if they're parallel, that'll help you out a lot. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just um, add um, a, a door. I'm gonna just make it really, really simple for now. Um, but we also already have some information for us. So instead of just kind of guessing where to draw this door, I do have some math done for me up here already. So I could just go and make the door that wide, or if I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, I can just go into this, find the middle of it, come down here and come into this one, find the middle of it. And again, my math will be perfectly done for me. So let's go ahead and do a door about this tall and let's do it that wide. So what am I doing? All right, I'm just gonna go into, I've got this square right here. And I'm just going to do the corner to corner. And when I come down through the middle, that will give me that side. And then I'll just do the same thing over here. That's why I said I don't usually completely erase blocking lines when I do all this because I find it really handy to just use the math I've already figured out. To get myself a door. Now, of course, you can go back and make a fancier door, make it three-dimensional. Uh, reminder on the first one, you can go um, start creating this uh, frame around it. We can get a much fancier frame than this. You can start doing the side of it. I'm just going to keep things a little simple because that's a skill that we've already looked at. Um, and then, well, I've already got all this math done here. I might as well give myself an opening in the hayloft. So I'm just gonna use lines I've already got. This one, this one, and this one. And again, I'm just gonna lighten these guys up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to look at is uh, understanding that now that we have these huge doors, we could actually see inside these barns too. 
So you just logically think about, well, here's the floor and here's the wall going up the side. So where they meet, that is where the floor ends. So once again, use our X. So I'm gonna go from this outer corner back to the X. If we're looking through this door, there you go. You can actually see where the floor stops inside. And we can, same thing up here in the hayloft. In fact, my line's still there from the beginning. So if this is the floor and this is where the wall is, that means it's this corner right here. Draw this line. And now we can see where the floor and the walls are inside. Okay. So the next skill that we are going to add is we're going to put um, vertical barn boards on. And how this works, I'm just going to make this one a little bit shorter to match my drawing. All right. We can do the, the cross, cross, cross. We can, we can figure out um, the width of the boards here. When you were going back in space, the only way to mathematically figure it out is to use the corner to corner technique. Because if I say the middle of this wall is right here, that's not right. Because this is equal to this and everything has to get smaller as it goes back in space. So when you start to use this technique, you find out really quickly, oh, the middle is right there because this side must be larger than that side, all right? And then you just kind of keep going. So I say, keep these lines light. I'm going to divide the space again here. I'm gonna divide it here. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. Now I have four equal spaces. Um, at this point, I could start to make uh, horse, horse stalls, right? Watch this, I can just go back like this, cool and start to divide up that way. Okay, so that gives us four sections. Let's go eight. So again, I'm just gonna go corner to corner, straight up and down, corner to corner, straight up and down, corner to corner. Wow, look at how confusing. It looks like a hot mess, but you realize we're just doing that to mathematically figure out how to sequentially get smaller as we go back in space. So for someone like me, I love this kind of math. <laughs> uh, you know, the only X I'm worrying about is this one. All right, so once we do that, that will give us the size of all the, the planks of wood going back. And then you need to start um, back here first in order to figure out the size of this one because the ones at the front have to be slightly bigger than that one. Um, so that'll just give you an idea um, if I'm going to take this distance and then I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, they're going to be about this big. And at that point, I'm just going to kind of figure it out that they're about that big. All right. So let's now do that for goodsies. So I'm going to just, again, keep yours really light. Go from corner to corner and then that's going to divide it in half and then I'm going to go straight up and down through my middle if you find this confusing then obviously keep these really light and also if you need to Everyone learns differently. Everyone processes information differently. So if you need to, you can always do this. I'm just gonna do it for a while to, to make it uh, simpler instead of having these million lines going everywhere. All right, so then I'm gonna do, now I've divided it in two. And as long as this is getting smaller as you go back, then you're probably doing it right. If things are not getting smaller, it means you're doing something wrong. Okay, so you notice now I'm not actually drawing the line from corner to corner. I'm putting my ruler from corner to corner, but I only need to know that. That's it. So that's going to save me a lot of erasing. And again, up through the middle. All 
All right, and the same with this one. I'm gonna make sure the ruler goes from corner to corner, give myself a bit of a line. But especially that second one, I only need to know that right there. And straight up and down. So that divides everything in four. Okay, I just lost my eraser. Here we go. Okay, everything is sequentially getting smaller. Perfect. And then I'm just going to do it one more time. So one thing about learning skills is by practicing doing this, it just becomes automatic. You just know, oh yeah, I got to find the middle. And you start to get pretty fast at it. All right, fabulous. All right, so now I just need to, I'm gonna figure out my front. And I'm doing that as my measurement. I like to just use a scrap piece of paper. I'm just gonna do that again. And if I go like that, um, I know that the barn board should be just a little bit bigger than that because I'm getting closer. So I'm just gonna try what happens if I just go like this. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit short here. So I'm just going to try it. What if I just make them a little bit bigger? By the way, this nice thing about doing barn board, they don't have to be exact. It's barn board. Oh, that one looks, that, that works. So I'm just going to, which one was it? Divide it up like that. And again, just gonna go straight up and down. And this is kind of cool. Because you figured out this wall, you know that wall too. You can just do this. If I go from the bottom of this board straight across watch this once that math is done for you you can use it so much as these series of lessons continue i'll show you other techniques for drawing these really complicated things but just using those same four steps. Cool. Um, and then of course, um, I talked about um, if you use a single line, that just represents the width of a piece of paper. And in order to show anything that has thickness and depth, which is what we're going for here, you need to use two lines. So you would actually do this. You would actually do two lines in order to show the gap between the pieces of wood. And again, going back here, um, this at the back, you probably wouldn't see the space, but you would see the space here. Again, because it's barn board, you can actually just kind of freehand it and give it more of that rough looking shape. Where if you're applying techniques to like skyscrapers and stuff, it's like, nope, you need to use straight edges. With barns, you can be a little bit more wobbly. We can do that. 
Okay, um, I just wanted to um, say some of the things that, that you draw go back to the basic cube and cylinder form. So if there was um, a silo, I think they're called silos, um, next to the barn, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it on this one. You would just do it as a cylinder. So I'm just gonna stick one here. So I would go straight up and down, straight up and down. I would give myself a blocking line going straight across, a blocking line going straight across. And then because it's a cylinder, right, the bottom has a curve, the top has the same curve, and then you know how to find the middle now, and then you would just put your, your kind of dome top on like this. Right, um, and then this curve here, so it, let's say if it's made out of say stone, um, they would all be the same curve. So how to do that quickly is I kind of always do this. I kind of go to the middle, go to the middle, go to the middle. And I just am constantly dividing everything in half in order to get that kind of look uh, to it. Um, just one more kind of fun little trick is to do wood texture is I talked about that you get a grain in wood like this, right? Um, and so um, you can get different grains by getting these lines in the wood. But so the easiest way to show it is I call it the stretchy flame. So I kind of take a flame shape like this to represent going around a knot hole. I'm actually doing kind of this right here. And then I can, I'm just stretching it out. So I'm going like that and then I'm gonna do another one, just kind of stretch it a little bit, stretch it a little bit and kind of do something like that. So you can add that texture to your drawings. I'm just gonna draw the actual knot hole, start doing a stretchy flame stretchy flame, stretchy flame. And throw those in every once in a while. Again, I might just have another one that has a little bit of one here. And then just start doing the lines and you can add texture of barn board to your drawing. The other thing you could possibly, I mean, bales of hay are easy. That's just the front of a cube. Go to the X, go to the X, go to the X, cut them off, and then just kind of go back and shade them with lines. Um, something like a fence might be something else you uh, want to have. And once you've got all these lines here, imagine if I take a fence. So here's the front post of the fence. And I go to the X and I go to the X and I go to the X. Um, and again, you would, you would do the find the middle, find the middle thing, but you can just come straight across here and use that to do your math and just come create across, 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 across like this. I said, once you figured out this math once, you can use it for a lot of other things. Okay, that is the end of my lesson. Uh, again, you can go back and make your drawings as fancy as you want. The other thing I would add is this was kind of a simple for a roof. An actual roof goes like this. You would extend out from the wall and then just go, you can go straight across here and then do the same there. Let's extend this line, go straight across, extend it here, right? So this, I would just go back to the X and it would tell me where that goes. Um, is actually a more realistic roof design.